here from Down Under. This is about video 19 of Rapid Turn. And some of you are probably thinking, so many videos on Rapid Turn, why is that? I actually think this is quite a breakthrough product. Um, when you think about it, many of us have got a background in CNC milling um, or in manual turning or manual machining, but very few of us have got a background in CNC lathe work. And this is the first time a product, as far as I'm aware, has become readily available that's low cost CNC lathe capability. And um, with the addition of a gang tooling platform with gang tooling positions, which is really not a lot of work, you can now do a production machining of small parts, even to medium sized parts, uh, automatically, um, just for a couple of thousand dollars. And that's quite a profound change. It's a new technology that's available. And it's really struck me as, as, um, as quite a refreshing new development um, within the machining industries. And so, you know, I, I think it's really important to, to uh, portray what's available. And so I encourage other YouTubers, and, and there's quite a few I notice every day adding rapid turn to their list of videos. I encourage you to do this because this is a great little uh, piece of technology. Now again, I have to put the caveat on it that I've yet to test it on tool steels and precision parts. I just seem to be having a run of lovely, easy little acetyl parts. Uh, so, you know, um, it's all with the proviso that, that will work out well with steel too. And I won't know that. I don't know that yet. Uh, so anyway, I'll get right into it now. And I've um, got another interesting little video for you on rapid turn. Well, here we are doing side two, which is just spot centering and drilling that hole in the middle. Um, and I'm able to use my 5C collets for the first time, which is so cool. Um, I've got, um, now that I've got the spindle corrected, I can use the 5C collets. Um, so I'll just run this now. It's only a tiny little program, just two drilling operations. But you'll see the reason why I had to modify the uh, gang tooling platform with this welded on wider section is so that when I'm doing this type of work with the 5C collets that the motor doesn't contact on the main column so the tooling system has been brought out about two inches so I'll just run that now okay here we go <laughs> And that's all it is. And about my last video, was it video 18, part 18, I was saying I could use the uh, halved piece of aluminium to find the center of the uh, TTS bore. But I actually uh, think on balance the dial indicator is better. It's a little bit more accurate. Um, if you set the, if you have a dial indicator that's got the dial at right angles to the stem, then it doesn't go out of view as you rotate it around um, and I found if you go to rather than set it on zero if you set it on a number a whole number uh, that way you, you don't have to consider plus or minus you know if you're a zero you got to think is that plus or minus as I went round if you're on one it's five and then fifteen as you go around which is easier to remember I think on balance for finding the TTS bore center it's probably more accurate and safe you don't have to put in any uh, touch off offset you just put in touch off uh, Z um, sorry touch off X and Y um, X is the zero and Y is noting down the amount uh, for your again traverse position I think on balance this is the way to go to use a dial indicator uh, on a pin with a little magnetic stem stuck on the end of the chuck works really well like that. Okay, let's run another part. I'm starting to get the hang of it now. And um, so I just talk you through it. 
before the machine starts making a lot of noise. So I set this piece of stock out, my little gauge. So we've got tool one first, and that's going to face. This is all conversationally programmed and then put together, converged together with the help of the uh, PathPilot facility to do that. Then I'm going to turn the outside, turn two angles on the outside, then move across to the back and put in a center uh, spotting drill uh, which is centering and chamfering for this hole which is a deep small diameter drill. Then we're moving over to the parting stage in this middle position and we're going to partially part and then chamfer and then fully part and at the last minute slow the res right down so the part doesn't flick off and get hit by the chuck jaws and get damaged. OK, let's run it now. Facing. Okay, Let me try these. We're going to move to the back position. Keep going. Slow down and ride off. Okay, I just want to talk for a minute about PathPilot Conversational and how good it is. Um, I mean, I've got a background in uh, using CAM systems. I've got Bobcad CAM and I can do a 3D milling toolpath, which is, you know, far too complicated to do by conversational. But when you're machining up lathe parts, um, they're typically much more straightforward. And all the various facilities that you've got here, from groove, part, chamfer, at various angles, and you can do compound angles, uh, face, turn, ID turn, drill, you can use that for spotting as well, uh, and threading. The combination of all of those machining operations will make a lot of mechanical type of parts. And the advantage of conversational is that you're doing it in the shop as you go, uh, adjusting your tool, sharpening your tool, tweaking it, and, and you're not referring back to your CAM program which might be in your office or somewhere else all the time. You're just doing it on the machine, which, which is really fast. Um, and I just wanted to go through, I've just learned a little bit more about actually producing it with uh, conversational. So one thing I've learned is it's really important to uh, have a good clear file. So you title it, say, let's say you start with uh, facing. You make sure you title it facing and then turn one, OD1 and so on. Then when you go into your files, you've got all these various little files here. Is this coming through okay? Yeah. Now, the beauty of this is that you can test each conversational part uh, individually with your piece of stock, so one after the other, until you're happy with it, until you've got all the files how you want them. Now, you can ap append them together, as I'd mentioned in a recent video, but you can also use the facility of, of starting a new file, let's call it all of those together, in this case, hub, say. Um, you can open the hub file, which may be just a blank file at this stage, and then you can go to converge uh, files, I presume that means C-O-N-V, and you can uh, just, just insert files. So you can just go to insert, you can file the, find the file you want, and open it and insert it. 
And so you end up with um, a whole bunch of, of, of those individual files inserted in the order you want them. And if you're not happy with the order they're in, then you can um, move them up or down as well. And when you're happy with that, then you can save it um, and run it and um, tweak it. You know, it's, it's very intuitive and very well designed bit of software. Not that I'm an expert on software, not that I can really, uh, really uh, judge particularly objectively, but it seems to me very intuitive anyway. So it allows you to put together uh, uh, a program and run apart pretty quickly and easily. Uh, if you have a practical background, as I do, years and years of manual machining, um, it's very intuitive. Well, that about wraps that video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So here we are, Rapid Turn, an amazing new technology that brings a whole lot of automatic CNC turning capability to us uh, masses that can't afford high-end CNC machines for scores of thousands of dollars. It's got a huge potential and it may not be this exact model that will provide the solution for everybody. It may be an iteration of a Mark II or III ahead of here, but I still think this is a milestone that's either there or very close to a breakthrough for us all. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.